start with another, another story here. Man walks into a diner. Sounds like a bad joke. A man walks into a diner and, and asks the waitress behind the counter for, uh, for the payphone. This is in the days before cell phones. And she points him over to the corner. He goes over there, puts a quarter in, dials a number, and uh, he says, uh, Hello, Mr. Jones. Uh, this is John Smith, and uh, I'd like to know if you have a place in your organization for a smart, hardworking sales manager to, uh, to oversee your sales staff. Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm, I see. Okay, uh, you already have a smart, hardworking sales manager, and uh, you like him very much. Okay, well, thank you for your time, sir. Um, have a good day. Hangs up, gets a big smile on his face, starts whistling and walking toward the door, which really puzzles the waitress. So with a touch of attitude, she says, what, what are you so happy about? You just got rejected. And he turns, he says to her, actually, I didn't. You see, I am that bright, hardworking sales manager at that company. I just wanted to make sure that my boss, Mr. Jones, thought so too. The guy calls his boss to get a compliment. It's a fictional story, but there's a truth behind it. People are starving for compliments. People are starving for affirmation. People are starving for encouragement, for a thank you, for a job well done, for a pat on the back. And we are in a position to offer that to them. It is like a glass of water to somebody who has been through the desert. They're not getting it at work. They're not getting it at home. They're not getting it wherever they are. And then we come along and we offer it to them. However, we may have been sold this idea that affirmation is not that important, that it doesn't really matter, or that it's just something that we do with children, something that we do for for our kids or for those we teach or for those who are around us who are young. I had a boss who used to say things like, affirmation, correct? There are some people, I guess, who need that sort of thing. Speaking about his employees, very condescending attitude, but it's just a myth. It's just a misrepresentation of the reality that affirmation is, in fact, a form of love. And it's the sort of thing that people are starving for. Right? Withholding encouraging words, it's just going to inflate their ego. So we have to be Um, a bit stingy with that. We have to be cautious about that. Or even, and how prideful does this sound, praising other people, encouraging them, affirming them. I like to do that, but it sort of makes me look like I'm not as as good. I'm not as smart. I'm not as important. I'm not as wise. I'm not as fill in the blank as they are. We need to be cautious about that. And it especially happens in the workplace. So this is this is this is simply I'm uh, posturing this as the uh, as the wrong prescription. Well, you know what what's the uh, what what what's the, the the right prescription? Now this one's we need even even stronger medicine. So we'll give it three proverbs rather than two on this one. Make encouragement a habit. Make affirmation a habit. And let me tell you something. We've been to Hanoverdale. My family's been to Hanoverdale a few years. This is one of the things that I think Hanoverdale does best. It does this so well. People all around here affirming one another. People all around here asking about one another. And not in the just typical American how you doing kind of sense. You know, that that sort of greeting that we give one another. I mean, how you doing where we really want to know. And where we come alongside and how can I help. And can I pray for you. It's not just a cliche. But here at Hanoverdale, I I have really been struck. No place I've ever been to is as encouraging on an individual level as what I've seen here at Hanoverdale, and it's been such a blessing for me and for my family, right? 1225 says, anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. People are walking around with backpacks full of rocks through their life, and they they encounter us, and what happens in that interaction? Are we indifferent to what's weighing them down? Do we perhaps add to the rocks, add to the backpack, add to the weight through what we're saying, discourage them rather than encourage them, maybe even in a well-meaning way? Or when they meet us, do we lift the weight for them? Are we, are we intentional about taking the rocks out of their backpack and helping them along the way? When we do, it cheers them up. When we do, it refreshes the soul. And we can go even further than that. You might remember the end of Proverbs, Proverbs 31, the, uh, the, the wife of noble character, basically the ideal person. Who is she? Somebody who is working tirelessly, 
Right? She's up before dawn. Her light doesn't go out at night. She's bringing food from afar. She's preparing it for her family and for her servants. And she's making a clothing and she's running a profitable business and uh, delighting her husband. And her, her husband lacks nothing of value. And we read through this 21 verses or 22 verses and we say, wow, what, how should we possibly thank this person? What is the ultimate reward for the ultimate person of character? Well, we see it at the very end of Proverbs. How does the book end? Charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be, be praised. What, what should we give her? You know, a new Lexus chariot? Should we, should we give her, uh, I don't know, a day to, at, at the Jerusalem spa? Some, some sort of shopping trip down in Cairo? No, what does Proverbs say? Give her praise, but not just any, but pr- give her the praise she has earned. I don't know if you ever noticed that. Give her the praise she has earned and let her works bring bring her praise at the city gate, out in public. Earned? What do you mean earned? Well, the scriptures say that this is something, it's not just a nice thing to do, but something that we owe to people. And something that when we withhold it, if they've earned it, if we withhold it, what does that do to relationships? What does that do to your relationship with that individual. It's almost like they've earned a paycheck and not gotten it on Friday. How would you feel if Friday came along and you did not get paid? But you had to work next week anyway, and the next Friday came and you didn't get paid. But you had to continue to work, and the next Friday came and you didn't get paid. How would your relationship with your employer be? Now, Scripture's telling us that this is how we view it, that this is something that's owed, this is something that is earned. And so let's make a habit of encouragement. Let's make a habit of giving people the the affirmation that is owed to them. What happens when we don't? Well, last story, I promise. A porter at at an airport, guy that comes out to the curb and checks your bag for you. You've met these kind of people, right? He comes out and is checking the bag for a particular, uh, particular customer. And as he's doing this, he's doing a reasonably good job. As he's doing this, this, this customer, this passenger, starts berating him, starts criticizing him for everything from his untucked shirt to uh, the pace at which is, he's working. He's bemoaning the state of today's youth. He told him he's going to tell his supervisor if he doesn't start moving faster. And Porter just you know, continuing on doing what he's doing, not responding, except when the man gets in his face and says, are you listening to me, pal? Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm moving as fast as I can. Eventually, the guy goes off to his gate. Another passenger comes to that porter and says, that guy was unbelievable. And you handled that so well. How do you handle people like that? You know where this is going, don't you? (laughs) He says, well, actually, it's pretty easy. The porter said, that guy... He's going to St. Louis. But I'm sending his bags to St. Petersburg. (laughs) When we do not give the praise that is earned, when we do not affirm as we ought to, bad things happen, dysfunctional consequences occur, and maybe it is a whole lot worse in our personal relationships than in our, our momentary relationships like that. What does Proverbs say in the third chapter? Don't withhold good from those who deserve it. When it's in your power to act, it is in our power to act. How much does this cost us to say thank you? How much does it cost us to say job well done? How much does it cost us to say I really appreciate you? How much does it cost us to lead on the basis of encouragement than on the basis of saying negative things or pointing out what is missing or how far somebody has to go. It is in our power to act. Perhaps we can make this a habit in humility rather than pridefully assuming that people do not need this. Again, it's a, it's a form of love. We should build people up rather than tear them down. And we say, well, okay, I know that. I had known that. I just forget. I have a very busy life. I'm overwhelmed with things. I just forget. Well, last point here. Here's a way to remember, and it's something that's been very useful for a lot of folks. You can try it this very day if you're serious about making progress on this. Take five coins, pennies, whatever you want. Take five coins and put them in your right pocket at the beginning of the day to remind you to affirm five times, at least five times during the course of that day. And every time you do, 
whether it's at work or at home or any place else, you take a coin out of the right pocket and you put it in the left pocket and you make sure that those five coins are in your left pocket by the end of that time period. And if you do work for a living, you know, for, for pay, if you go out and, and do that in the workplace, make sure that when you come home, you take those five coins out of your left pocket and you put them back in your right pocket and you start all over again at home. And eventually you get better. Maybe you could use seven. Eventually maybe you use ten and eventually you don't need coins at all. And see how that transforms your relationship. Now, you can experiment with this yourself, right? Give folks the praise that they have earned. Give folks the encouragement that they deserve, and it is transformational. In humility, let's take God's word seriously. There's so much good stuff in this, this little wisdom book.